later. Oh, for sure. But, um, because I wouldn't be a fat Mac, I guess, without being negative on some shit. I just like, I like to, I like to give my opinion. But honestly, this, the match was way too bogged down by too many personalities involved. I think if I could have seen a Sami Zayn versus Daniel Bryan one-on-one wrestling clinic for 10 minutes, nine and a half minutes, I, you know, look at, look at some of the matches Bryan had with Punk. Look at some of the matches Zayn, or look at the match that uh, Zayn had with Nakamura when he first came into NXT. Look at what both of them have done on the indies. They could have pulled away with, uh, again, a four, uh, 4.5 or 5-star match. But you added all the extra people in there, and to, and a lot of it probably is I'm not following the storyline, so I kind of got the story, but I wasn't invested. So maybe yeah. that took me out of it. I will admit that. Nonetheless, if you just give me Sammy and Brian straight up front, I would have loved that over anything else. I, I agree fully. I, I think um, the, the the people at ringside did kind of take away from the match, but at the same point, they kind of added to it just for where this story is supposed to be. Um, but I I look forward to seeing them in a one-on-one match where nobody can interfere. Yeah, yeah, and I can understand that. They're they're a lot of fun. I feel like they should be higher up on a card at some point, hopefully when there's a crowd. I would love to see them higher up on the card, but I don't know if that'll happen in WWE. No, probably not. Well, as long as Daniel Bryan can raise up Drew Gulak with the rest of his career and kind of instill that into him, that's that that'd be a good thing. I would agree. Um then we came to a match that uh has so many positives, but has a giant, giant splotch on it. And I just <laughs> recently found I just recently found out that the giant splotch was due to um, just uh, mishaps, poor timing, and um, s- stuff you couldn't control. So I, I actually altered my grade on this match a bit. So we had the three-way ladder match. This was for the SmackDown. Were you as mad when they announced this as I was? Because it well, just right away it rubbed me wrong. I guess if you if you're talking about what I'm just about to say here, um, then yes, and that is that we had a three way ladder match for the SmackDown Tag Team Championships, where we had a solo John Morrison defeat a solo Jimmy Uso and a solo Kofi Kingston. Is that what pissed you off? Or yeah, are we yeah. Are... How how you're gonna have a three way oh, match for okay. tag team championships? And there ain't no tag teams in the match. And yes, all the that's super who fucked this up for showing up to work sick. That's that's <laughs> what I heard, and and after I heard that, I I did change this because I I took a lot of points away for having this match yeah. without having tag teams, and I had to change my grade, especially since not only is it not anybody's fault, including the writers, the or the agents, or WWE, that there was a tag match with no tag teams. But all three of these guys, from what I heard, Miz, that happened the day of. Yeah, yep. So these guys had less than, easily less than 24 hours, I had to say less than 12 hours, to come up with a ladder match yeah. on the fly. We want the same spots, but you got to cut the match in half. And a fucking good ladder match. Oh, like, yeah. a very good ladder match. Well, compared if you like to this match, you're going to want to tune in next Friday on SmackDown when the Miz... <sighs> faces Jay Uso and Big E in another ladder match for the tag team championship. Somehow <laughs> I, hope you're I don't joking. think Morrison I hope you're joking. Is, no, it Are is you real. joking or it is that is real. Oh, come it's on. Very real. And somehow That's I'm, I'm stupid. thinking Morrison and Miz don't walk away tag team championships champions with the Miz in the match. See, now that's something you can control. So yeah. don't, don't, oh my God. <laughs> I should change the grade back right now. Today. Over stupidity. <laughs> Fuck you guys. God damn it. I'm not going to, cause it's not these guys' fault, but that is the agents and Vince McMahon's and the writer's fault. I put that solely on, not the agents so much. The agents get credit for this, but they don't get, they don't Quit get hurt. Blaming the okay. Asians. <laughs> Let's do you want to talk about the match? <laughs> um it was entertaining and interesting and the ending was amazing. I this is WrestleMania now is like 
one day away. No, it's a week old now. <laughs> and, and and I don't retain things that well. No. Uh, I did put on here these three guys. I, I put on here. We've seen so many ladder matches and everybody's done everything, but I, I felt like they found some unique spots or at least yeah. ways to keep my attention. And I I added in my notes, <laughs> unlike uh, Orton and Edge on night two, <clears throat> which could have come up with uh, – but anyways, um, Morrison I thought really stood out, and I don't I think for for sure highlight reels for deck for a decade or more to come are gonna include the tightrope walk into a Spanish fly, yeah. which was just fucking fantastic. Yeah. Oh my god, I loved it. A little awkward, um, but oh my gosh, that if that's the worst you gotta say about it, I couldn't do a Spanish fly or walk the tightrope or even probably climb the turnbuckle. So holy shit. <laughs> One thing. Oh my gosh! I don't even have this in my notes, and I just remembered. Um, there was one, <laughs> there was one point where they put the ladder in between the top and middle turnbuckle in the corner, just kind of laid it flat like a table or something. Mm. And then he had John Morrison. I think he just jumped and did a splash, or he might have done a flip or something. He did something, some kind of move off the the top turnbuckle onto one of the other guys. I think it was an USO. Anyways, the the commentators who uh, the commentators were all awful all night. I just want to say that. Yeah. They said, and folks, that's why we call it parkour because he uses any part of the ring and any part of the ladder to do anything. Dude, that's not parkour. Jumping <laughs> off of a top rope onto a ladder is not what parkour is. Parkour Nothing translates to, parkour. to free running. <laughs> yeah, nothing to do with parkour. Now, if he would have said it when he was running the tightrope and doing right. the Spanish fly, I would have bought it. No, he did it for jumping. Oh, that's not that's not what it is. Um, but I, I, I do want to note that this match really stood out to me as being severely hurt by no audience. A yeah. ladder match with nobody to like ooh ah with all of these things. I felt it, but I still at points, I feel the three distracted me enough that it didn't ruin at all the experience for me until, and Pasty, this is my first note of it, but you talked about it earlier, the edit. There's a spot when Uso was pushed off of the ladder and onto the floor, and it was framed and edited so much to where I'm 95% there was a crash pad there that he landed on, and that's okay. Yep, yep, yep. I don't mind it. But it looked really obvious the way they shot it. Yeah, the way like, he like leapt for it and like. Yeah, yeah it yeah. just it, it came off as again too too edited, too staged. You which could tell he wanted I, to hit that mat right in the middle. Again, I don't mind it because again, I don't even think I'd jump onto the crash pad, let alone do it at all. So, I give him credit for it. But if you have the chance to edit it, let's edit it better. Let's let's set it up better. Let's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All in all, though, I think we could probably go out of our way and say this is the best "quote unquote" traditional match of the first night. Um, I guess whatever. I don't <laughs> know. What you call, you call it, it a traditional. I mean, match. yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like I don't think you can call it a traditional match. It's a three way ladder match. It's it's Four still a very gimmicky. It's, it's still a fucking very gimmicky match. So. <laughs> I don't even think I don't think you can call it that, buddy. So um, <laughs> no, but but it, it was it was a match I enjoyed. Yeah. Can I say that? Yeah, can I, I think say so. it was a match I enjoyed. Yep. Okay. It was good. Ugh. It was it was solid. This was at this point of the night. I was like, hey, maybe they're gonna turn shit around. You know, this this was minus the shitty editing. Yeah, this was really well done, and I was very surprised they were able to pull off this match with half the people. Last minute changes, like holy shit, just so much holy shit. Yeah, so much could have gone wrong that the little bit that did is like, wow, that's it. Mm. Thank then God it we... was the Miz who got sick and not Morrison, though. Oh, oh, <laughs> could you imagine? <laughs> Like um, you can still savage the match, salvage the match as long as you have more. Savage. That's racist. <laughs> <laughs> savage. <laughs> yeah. 
Next up, we had a no DQ, the cream of the crop, Kevin well, it Owens. Didn't start out as a no DQ. It started out as a normal match. It did. It, which is this? Just dumb. It, it's dumb. Which again took a really good. Okay, so we had Kevin Owens uh, versus Seth Rollins. There's a story in here somewhere. I don't know it. Again, I just get to the beginning for like of the match. The better part of the year, and everybody's sick of it. Okay. And these two are two of the two of the best on their on their roster. Yep. Actually, actually, I, I have in my notes right here. Still, Owens and Rollins are two of the best on the roster and had a solid match. They legitimately did. I really liked it. Um, this was another one. The editing kind of stuck out to me. Yeah. Uh, and um, I have in my notes the pacing was really off. But again, I think that may have been from over editing. I don't know. It seemed jumbled. Yeah. You you can assume that when they recorded it, you know, Rollins and Owens know how to put on a match. They know how to do that. So it would have been real solid without the editing. Right. But then you factor in the editing and cutting things so they look like ass. And, yeah, it makes the two of them look like fucking idiots. Um, so the match started off pretty normal. Rollins didn't want it from Owens. Owens wanted to kill Rollins. Rollins eventually got outside the ring, hit Owens in the face with the ring bell, calling for the disqualification. In which Kevin Owens begged Seth Rollins to come back and do this the right way because this is WrestleMania and it can't end like this. And Seth Rollins did not protest. (laughs) What? Yeah. (laughs) And we don't know why. You willingly come back for an ODQ match? Like, uh, I don't know. To me, it didn't make sense. I guess I haven't been watching a lot lately to, to... follow things through but the heel shouldn't come back you know owen should have had to go after him and and should there be some kind of authority figure to put the stipulation on the match like any wrestler oh you pinned me well can we do this again but this time with submissions (laughs) yeah that 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 isn't uh it's not a good look (laughs) not especially not for the heel this match like though, is said. where I realized how well they set up the arena with all of the WrestleMania goods, the the stage props and everything that they would have had all over the place. This is where I really started to notice, holy shit, they did a good idea of compacting all of that into this one small space and making it look really good. And then Kevin Owens jumped off of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this is for the greatest wrestler of all time, Shane McMahon. He didn't say it, but he should have. It would have been funny. That that actually, that would have just bumped it up a notch. <laughs> I tell you what, I would have loved hearing that. Really? I, I would have loved that. Uh, but. Uh, and then the it, editing. It, the editing was shitty. But when Kevin Owens came off that fucking prop and, and did the backdrop through the table and barely hit Rollins, wouldn't you shoot that a couple more times? Yeah, yeah, why not? Like, why wouldn't you? <laughs> There's no reason you can't reshoot that. Yeah, yeah. The only thing is that it didn't look like there was much of an airbag underneath the table. Like you saw him go through the table and it. But still, you can flat. you can set it up again. Yeah, Come on. Yeah, yeah. And it wasn't only... like it was that high up. What, ten feet? Not not as high as a ladder. Not as yeah. Oh no, not at all. Yeah, the only thing I have in my notes that you really didn't touch on, Pasty, is that uh, and and you, actually you kind of did. I just I put it into to wrestling or mark terms. A dusty finish doesn't belong at WrestleMania. It cheapens the match. Yeah. And if anybody's listening and doesn't know what a dusty finish is, this is a dusty finish. It got named for Dusty Rhodes, who when he was booking the NWA territories, leaned on this finish way too many times, where the match ends, but then for whatever uh, shenanigans. You want to call it a MacGuffin in movie terms, if you know what a MacGuffin is. They restart the match, and and it changes the ending. Yeah. A dusty finish is just dumb. For, for WrestleMania, it can be used correctly. I don't want to see it in my WrestleMania, honestly. Yeah, no. No. Superstars should not be able to f- form and forge matches in WrestleMania. Like no, be solid and solid it, it, it bothers me when it happens on Raw. It pisses me off when it happens at WrestleMania. Yeah. All in all, this was not a horrible match. The editing was really bad, and that that fake finish in the middle was pretty stupid. But uh, solid between two very solid competitors. 
A lot of shit talking, and I like that. These two, I also, I do have one little note. I think this, these two veterans were actually hurt by not having an audience, because both of these guys, 